Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about optical flow calculations in OpenCV using the Gunner Farmbax algorithm. So, uh, I'm going to have a video on optical flow theory, but optical flow is the apparent motion of the image pixels as the object moves from one frame to the other. So, they are like velocity. Some people call them image velocities. It's not exactly that, but optical flow shows you it's like a vector field. So you are going to allocate to each pixel a vector field, right? A U value and a V value, a horizontal and a vertical displacement that shows where that pixel is gone when uh, the object moved from frame one to frame two how much that pixel moved between these two frames, how much horizontally, how much vertically. And optical flow calculation has quite a bit of a history. Uh, I did some uh, part of my uh, PhD dissertation on it as well. And uh, it has uh, methods that are sparse and dense. And sparse means it's not going to calculate the motion for all of the pixels only for some pixels of interest like for example maybe corner points or something while dense optical flow like this one gunner form back is going to calculate that vector field for all of the pixels of course dense methods they need more computations but they give you the motion for the entire pixel uh, frames in the uh, frame pixels instead of just some of interest and uh, like the probably Horn Schnuck and then Lucas Canada, especially Lucas Canada, are the low computation methods. And since especially Lucas Canada, you can use it for a few pixels, like uh, corner points. And um, here I'm going to use that method because I like dense optical flows a lot more than the. Um, sparse ones so here i need the numpy i need the matplotlib and i need cv2 i have two frames from cars on the highway and i'm gonna pass those frames to the optical flow method many optical flow methods they work with grayscale images so here not only i have the images in color i also have the images in grayscale call them frame one and two that i need to pass to the cv2 calc optical flow form back, right? There is another one for Lucas Canada and so on. And uh, this method takes those two frames and calculates that vector field that, as I said, has a U and a V value for each pixel. So what is it that you need to pass to it? As I said, the first two frames, if you have an initial optical flow, you can pass it here. And then later uh, here, when you pass a flag, that flag uh, decides whether to use this initial optical flow to start calculating the current optical flow or just go with nothing and start from scratch. There are several parameters here that you need to specify for this method. Here I provided you the link that if you want, you can go to it and read it, but I decided to explain them a little bit for you and tell you what they are instead of just referring you to the website. I would like to explain them a little bit to you. So the first one is previous image, next image. If you have an initial flow, you can use it. The next two are very important, the pyramid scale and the levels. If you remember in one of my previous videos, I talked about the Gaussian pyramid. So when we have optical flow, uh, in calculations of the optical flow, one of the things that we do, we need to calculate derivatives of the light intensity with respect to the X and Y directions. Partial derivative of I with, if we call it I, the intensity, call it I, partial of I with respect to X and Y. You have to calculate those and you have to do it numerically. And the way that those numerical derivations are any meaningful is that uh, when the object moves between one frame to the next, the motion of the pixels is very small. If the object moves considerably several pixels and so on, a big uh, displacement, those derivatives are not going to be super uh, accurate and your calculations of optical flow are not going to be super good. So what would you do if the object between the two frames moved uh, a large amount? Well, let's say the frame rate is not uh, fast enough to capture the fast moving object. 
in between frame one and two, it moved 10 pixels. So what would you do? So what you do is you create a pyramid of the two frames and bring down the scale of the two images. So if you bring down the scale, let's say to half of what it was from the first level to the next level, then if the object moved 10 pixels between the original frames, now between the resize frames that are only 50% of the original one, the object only moves five pixels. And if you go down another level, now it moves two and a half pixels. You go another one, now it is 1.25 pixels. And as long as the object moves almost around one pixels or so between the two frames, then those derivatives are good. So you need to have enough of levels of the pyramid and enough of the scaling such that at the very top of the pyramid, the smallest images that you have for the two frames, the object does not move more than one pixel between the two frames. Then what would you do? You calculate the optical flow between those two small images and then use those uh, initial calculations for the next level that has a little bit bigger images. So when you start the calculation of optical flow for the next layer, you're not going to start from scratch. You start from the estimate of what? the previous smaller frames. And you keep now calculating optical flow from the tip of the pyramid back to the base of the pyramid where you have bigger images. And this is how you handle large displacements. So if your object has moved big time, you need to make sure you have this scale factor, which is between zero to one, to a small number, and this one, which is the number of layers of pyramid, to a big number, so that at the tip of the pyramid, I have less than one pixel displacement. So keep that in mind for these two numbers. Right now, I'm bringing down the images by a factor of 0.5, and I only have three layers, but in general, Again, I can bump up this number and reduce that number if I have bigger and bigger displacements. The next thing is the window size that you are calculating the optical flow and finding the uh, basically averaging. And it explains that larger values of this window will increase the robustness of the algorithm to noise and give better chances for fast motions. So if your object is moving fast, you don't want to have small windows. You want to have big windows, and here I'm using 15 by 15 pixels for each window. Okay, so uh, that is going to be good, but it yields, of course, more blurred motion field of view, right? Of course, you use smaller window size, you're going to have more crisp and uh, nicer calculations, but uh, at the uh, expense of losing the accuracy when the object is moving uh, uh, very fast. So this is a trade-off, this number here. To make it very big or very small, it depends on your knowledge from the speed of the object moving in front of the camera and the frame rate. Then the number of iterations for the algorithm that it takes in each level of the pyramid to calculate the optical flow. So at each level of the pyramid, the optical flow calculation is not a single iteration calculation. There is a loop that goes through the uh, uh, calculations and for each pixel calculates the optical flow. So each layer of pyramid has a loop and how many iterations would you allow each layer to have? And here you see I'm using like uh, three iterations minimum and then uh, maximum actually, sorry. And then there is this guy and this one, this five and 1.1. These are the parameters for this algorithm alone. Okay, and these are the polynomial factors and the neighborhood and so on that it uses to uh, do some approximations from the image. And it talks about it that, for example, for the first one, you typically use 5 or 7, right? And then if you use 5, use 1.1 for the second parameter. If you use 7, use 1.5. You need to read the paper of this Farnback algorithm to understand what is poly n, what is poly sigma. But the important thing is this. It says larger value for the first parameter will be approximated by what? Larger values means the image is approximated by smoother surface. This is the important part. Yielding more robust algorithm, but more blurred motion. So robust to what? Robust to fastness of the motion, robust to noise. So this guy, again, bigger of that is kind of similar to the bigger of the window size. 
right? And then bigger means the image is going to be more blurry. So you have to see whether you want to go with five or seven. And then you have uh, suggestions for the poly sigma. And then there is flag that you can have. And this flag will tell you whether to use any initial flow, whether to use any uh, basically Gaussian box instead of a, a Gaussian filter instead of a box filter for optical flow optimization uh, calculations and so on. So here we don't uh, want any of those extra options. So we pass a zero here. And now it is going to give me the vector field flow, which has element zero and element one, which is U and V. And the, this part here is just some graphics, which I got from the OpenCV, and I think it's beautiful. So it converts those uh, Cartesian values U and V into the uh, polar coordinates, which is radial magnitude and then the angle. And then it uses different angles to create different hue values. If you know, in the HSV color space, hue is like a circle. It starts from zero, goes to 180. And basically, uh, as you move around the circle, your hues, your colors would change. So here, that's what this one is doing. It's saying that, hey, go ahead and convert my angles to what? First, convert them into um, radians, okay? And then if the object is moving, let's say, at zero degrees, right? It's moving horizontally or forward or backward. Give that pixel one color if it's moving upright at 90 degrees or pi over two. Give it another color corresponding to pi over two in the HSV color space for hue. And so different motions at different directions will get different colors. So if an object is moving to the right, it is going to be one color. If the object is moving upward, downward, that object is going to be painted another color. Okay, so this is just the part playing with HSV color space and the uh, angle of the motion based on the components of the optical flow. And what I'm doing at the end, I'm showing picture one, picture two, and this kind of RGB version of the optical flow. Or I could just show you the magnitude of the optical flow, right? Which is basically, it, and binarize it, right? By a simple threshold. And then all of the white pixels will be moving pixels. All of the black pixels will be background, right? But here, this RGB is doing a little bit more than that. It shows you which parts are moving and not, and it also shows you which direction they are going. So let's go ahead and run it. There we go. So that's frame one. This is frame two. And as you can see, the object moved. Now, clearly, if you look at these two cars in the front, they have moved a lot more than one pixel, right? This image is like 470 by like 1100 in this direction, 1100 in this direction, like 470 or so. And that's what I told you. Remember in my previous video, I said if you do plot in matplotlib, you can see the pixel coordinates. Look at uh, this bottom right corner here. You see as I move, right, it gives me the pixel location. So when I come here, you see that it is about like a thousand something by 400 something, 460, 70. So that's the size of the images. And so you really need pyramids and you need several layers. And this image here is the optical flow. And each object is, of course, moving a little bit in different directions. This object is moving this direction, that object. And then uh, when this guy is expanding, when this guy comes to the front and kind of call it blooming in op optical flow, the object gets bigger. It's not like all of the pixels are moving in this direction. Because when the object gets closer to you, it's like an explosion. Some pixels come in that direction. Some pixels appear to move to the left. Some pixels appear to move to the right. That's why you see here these multi-colors here. Why? Because the objects are getting closer to me. If I saw them from a side view and the size of the objects would be the same, then I expect them to be unicolor. But because the objects are getting closer and these pixels are moving in all sorts of different directions, although their center of mass is moving along the lane, that's why I kind of see these multicolors, but you see mostly that you can see these uh, six, seven objects here. And there is a little bit of extra uh, pixels here that are not 
objects but they can be some parts of the shadow and there could be a little bit of frame displacement here so as you can see there is a little bit of frame displacement if you look at this car here here there is a little bit up and down here but um, mostly the black area is the background that is not moving and these guys are basically the optical flow and as I said, I can convert everything to black and white, but this one kind of shows you a little bit of motion as well. Okay, so this is a simple dense optical flow based on the uh, farmback algorithm. So hopefully you like it and it was useful to you. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you.